So sometimes teachers may lie. Well, that's not true. Sometimes we don't tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. What I'm referring to is in previous chemistry courses or in previous science courses, we told you that an acid and a base combine in something called a neutralization reaction to make a salt and water. And of course, that is absolutely true. Uh, but we often talked about that as being a neutralization reaction. And while we do classify those things as neutralization reactions, they're not exactly going to be neutral every single time. Sure, there are some salts and that are produced that are going to be neutral, that is, some acids, some bases, are going to react together to produce a neutral solution, but that's not always the case. Sometimes salts will produce solutions that can be either acidic or basic, as well as neutral. And how can we figure this out? Well, let's take a look. Up until this point, we've talked about titrations and neutralization reactions as producing a salt and water. But let's take a closer look at that salt. Because the salt itself can have a pH of 7, and in certain types of acid-base reactions and certain types of titrations, it will have a pH of 7. But that's really dependent on the strength of the acid and the base that are being combined, and which is going to dictate ultimately what the pH is of the solution. And the ultimate determining factor of that is going to be the ions that are produced by the acid and the base to form the salt and whether or not they're going to subsequently react with water and whether or not they're going to subsequently behave as an acid or a base. So let's take a look at our component acids here and bases. If we have a strong acid, we have to note that it's going to produce ions that are going to be conjugate bases and that these conjugate bases of strong acids are going to be weaker than water. Therefore, they're not going to affect the pH of the solution. So an example of this, when we take a look at hydrogen chloride, we're going to be taking a look at chlorine or the chloride ion as being the conjugate base of hydrogen chloride, and this is not going to affect the pH of the solution. In the case of strong bases, we have conjugate acids that are also going to be weaker than water. Therefore, they're not going to affect the pH. So in the case of the conjugate here for sodium hydroxide, your conjugate is going to be the sodium ion, which is weaker than water, not going to affect the pH. So what we see oftentimes with these two things is that the hydrogen and the hydroxide of the strong acid and the strong base will form water in our neutralization reaction, and then sodium and the chloride ion will come together to form our salt, sodium chloride. But because sodium chloride has been formed from a strong acid and a strong base, and our conjugates of strong acids and strong bases, it is a neutral salt. It does not affect the pH of the solution. So up until this point, this has been one of the most common salts that we've dealt with in neutralization reactions, and it's true. It doesn't affect the pH. But let's take a look at some scenarios that might, and these involve weak acids and weak bases. So the difference with these weak acids is that they produce ions, that is conjugate bases, that are stronger um, bases than water. Remember, water auto-ionizes and produces hydroxide ions. So in this case, the conjugate base produces a greater concentration of hydroxide ions than water would on its own. And therefore, it will affect the pH of our solution. Um, weak bases as well are going to produce ions, that is, have conjugate acids that are stronger or produce more hydronium ions in solution than water does when it auto-ionizes. So this too will affect pH. And what this gives us is a number of scenarios in which we have acid-base combinations that ultimately produce salts that will affect the final pH of the solution. So just taking a look at a general summary of these, we have strong acids and strong bases combining to form a neutral salt. And traditionally, up until this point, that's what we've been looking at. But we also have other combinations as well. Let's say we had a weak acid combined with a strong base. What we would get out of this is a solution that would produce a salt as well as water, but we would have a basic salt. That is, the salt would actually impact the uh, pH of the solution to such an extent that it would be higher than a neutral pH. A strong acid would combine with a weak base to produce an acidic salt, and therefore this solution once the reaction was complete, would have a pH that is lower than neutral or lower than 7. Weak ba bases and weak acids, when they combine, well, that's a little tougher to predict. What it really depends on is the strength of that weak acid and the strength of that weak base relative to one another that's going to dictate whether or not we have an acidic, neutral, or basic solution. 
So if the Ka of the weak acid is larger than the Kb, then we're going to form an acidic salt out of this. If it's the other way around, where we have a Kb um, greater than the Ka, we're going to have a situation where we have a basic salt. So let's take a look at a few examples of these, just so hopefully we can hit this point home. So going back to sodium chloride, we've already taken a look at this, but let's break it apart a little bit. If we take a look at the sodium ion, we're going to see that it is a cation of a strong base. This is where you get to play a little bit of chemistry detective here. You can figure out where these cations came from. In all likelihood, you're just adding, most cases for a base, you're just adding a hydroxide onto it here. So sodium ion likely came from sodium hydroxide, whereas the chloride ion coming from an acid, we can just tack on a hydrogen here, it came from a strong acid, that is hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid. They formed water and the sodium and the chloride ions don't affect the pH of the solution to any great extent. So because neither ion is going to produce more hydronium or hydroxide ions than water would anyway, we have a neutral solution or ions that don't affect the pH. Let's take a look at a different example though. Let's take a look at a salt of ammonium chloride. Well, if we're piecing this thing or taking it apart, we can see that the ammonium ion comes from ammonia. And as we've discussed before, ammonia is a relatively common weak base. So we know that it's <clears throat> its conjugate is going to be still a weak acid, but it is going to be stronger than water. If we take a look at the chloride ion, we know that this is an anion or a conjugate of a strong acid, so it's not going to have any effect on the pH of our solution. But because ammonia is, uh, or the ammonium ion is, a conjugate of a weak base, it will have an impact on our solution. So in this case, only the cation affects the pH of the solution, and because it's the conjugate of a weak base, it's going to form an acidic solution. That is, it's going to act as an acid, or at least more acidic than water would be without that ion. Let's take a look at yet another example. In this case, we have sodium fluoride. So if we take a look at these individual ions, we can take a look at sodium likely coming from sodium hydroxide. Either way, it's going to be the cation of a strong base. And we have the fluoride ion, which of course we've talked about in previous podcasts as being likely from hydrogen fluoride, which is a weak acid. And since it is stemming from a weak acid, it is likely to act as a base, not a strong base, still a weak base, but stronger than water. And so in this case, only the anion affects pH, and we would classify this then as a basic solution. Last salt we're going to take a look at is ammonium fluoride. And as we can see, we have the ammonium ion, which is the conjugate acid of the weak base ammonia, and we have the fluoride ion, which is the conjugate base of the weak acid hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid. Now we can't just take a look at this formula and say definitively whether it's going to be acidic or basic. We have to take a look and compare the Ka and the Kb of the parent acid and the parent base involved. So the parent acid, that is the one that's going to donate the uh, conjugate base, the fluoride ion, is hydrofluoric acid. The parent base that's going to donate the ammonium ion, that is ammonia. And so if we compare the Ka to the Kb, what we see is that the Ka of hydrofluoric acid is greater than the Kb of ammonia. And so what we get out of this is an acidic salt. So hopefully what you've learned from this vodcast is that solutions, just because they're formed in a neutralization reaction between an acid and a base, doesn't necessarily make them neutral. We have to establish how the salt that results from this particular reaction is going to affect the pH of the solution. So there, now you have the whole truth. Or more of it anyway. Thanks for watching. So if you're looking to watch this video again, if you're looking for some additional videos on some of the chemistry topics you've been covering in class, take a look at our YouTube channel or follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching.